Hi, a friend of mine who works at Financial Executive Institute, Dylan Papentus, has asked me a few questions about data quality, data quality management. Uh, I thought the questions were interesting. Thought I'd record here and uh, my answers and see if there was some value to those that subscribe to my blog and blog. One of the first questions he asks is, how does it do the relationships between people, technology, and processes impact data quality management? First thought that comes to mind actually is one of my recent discoveries or impressions. There are some technologies in this world that really weren't made to be very exacting in the way they keep data. A friend of mine working with some new technology shared with me a while ago that at times the data files disappear. He said, well, I have some staff members that have come back to me and said, well, we've been looking at the logs now for an hour trying to find where the file went and we have no idea. When you lose data, that's a serious data quality management issue. And if technology is written in such a way that it's sloppy, that it's not, uh, uh, not exacting, that it doesn't value your data as much as you value your data, then that's going to be a serious problem for data quality management. Losing data is the worst problem that you can have in data quality management. So you need technology that values your data as much as you value your data. Now, how much do you value your data? Well, if your processes uh, for security, for example, allow anyone to have access to the data with uh, no audit trails of any kind, then you don't really value your data all that much because uh, not keeping track of who does what to the data is a sign of, of lax value to the data. So processes can impact the data as much as uh, poor technology can impact the data. Now people, how do people figure into this? Well, I have a good friend of mine uh, who I've done a series of videos with, Amit Trian. Uh, one day Amit said to me as we were walking back from a dinner together, he said, you know, Kip, I just love it when I can get my hands on financial data. That is somebody who values data, who has that kind of perspective. Finding those kinds of people is difficult to do because there's not a lot of people that love data, but there are people that do love data. I find data fascinating, discovering what is in the data. So if you have people that are attracted to and value data, they're going to have a, uh, they're going to know, they're going to sense what is going to create value in that data and preserve value in that data and what, and how to do that. So those three things, I mean, I think that the key attribute here, because all of those things, processes are defined by people, technology is written by people. If you have people that value data, then you have a much better chance behind all three of those pillars, you have a much better chance of having data quality, quality data that is useful for your organization. Dylan Papenfuss's second question to me was, what are some of the ways that poor data quality negatively impacts an organization's operations? Well, finance is a domain the process of, of measuring, accounting, holding people accountable is a process of data. And um, we have some of the largest financial disruptions have happened in the country because financial statements were bogus. Well, when financial statements are bogus, that's a data quality issue. And even if you don't go so far as someone misrepresenting completely what has happened and why it has happened, if you measure the wrong things, if you account for things in the improper way, if the data you accumulate and the statistics you accumulate out of the data present an inaccurate picture, then you're going to make poor decisions. So much of our decision making is based upon data. Not all of it. There's intuition. There's anecdotal evidence that we use at times, but some portion of it should be data-driven. Data can challenge your preconceived notions. It can, it can make you evaluate things in a different light. So data that is correct can change your direction and make you go in a different direction. 
valuing your data can can drive the organization in appropriate ways, whereas inappropriate data, measuring the wrong kinds of things or presenting the wrong kinds of values, can mean poor decision making. Dylan's third question to me is, what are the aspects of a culture conducive to high quality data? By and large, I find organizations that employ intelligent people have a greater respect for data because intelligent people over time have recognized that data can inform them as to what is real and what is not. Uh, there's a famous military phrase I've heard someone quote one time saying when there's a difference between the map and the terrain, you've got to go with the terrain. Well, our data is a map. Our data is not the terrain. And if there's a gap between the data and the actual physical world we're living in, that gap's going to show up at some point if you're using that data in some rigorous way. Having some aspect of, of acknowledging that, but yet finding and testing that data continually is something that, that I find organizations that have our higher data quality um, aspect to them. And some industries do this more. Some industries are more data specific. Uh, finance organizations, financial organizations are very data driven because um, it, by and large, that's the only business there is, is projecting the future based upon the past, based upon the data points that we're seeing. Uh, those that physically manage objects sometimes don't do as, deal as much in data, um, but they could do more. Uh, Dylan Papenfuss's fourth question to me is, how can companies best train finance employees be to become fluent in data quality? This is kind of an interesting question to me in, in a certain respect because the original data quality function of most organizations started in finance. And, and in some instances, finance became lax about the problems. In other instances, others took data more seriously than finance did. And in some instances, actually, finance has examples of very good data quality. Using the data appropriately and consistently, often on a daily basis, can drive better data management processes. Exposure of data exposes the errors and problems in the data and cleans up data faster than any other way that you can do. If you expose the data to be used in reporting and people find problems in the data, if they don't have any way of correcting that problem, then it just stays there and it never gets, gets uh, used again. It, it never gets improved in some way. Having the ability to use the data, view the outputs, but then also to apply some sort of corrective mechanism in a, in a, in a authorized way, in a controlled way, in a coherent way with, with other community users of the data, all of that tends to generate how you can use and improve your data quality in some respects. Fifth question is, how can company devise a coherent data strategy? This is one that I don't have as many opinions on because I'm not really in a data strategy space. I guess if I were to answer this question from my perspective, the thing that I find we don't do very well at is we accept the existing data architectures, our business systems architectures, as the only way things can be done. And much of our business systems architectures were developed decades ago. If we were to challenge the way our data is stored in ledgers, if we were to challenge the notion that the general ledger has to be highly aggregated, that it's not possible to maintain more detailed data, can we go clear to transactions? Probably not, because the compute capacity involved in that is, is difficult to, to pay for. But maintaining lower level balances means we increase the kinds of data we can see and the ways we can use that data more effectively. And it's in a controlled structure. Reconciliation is a low value add activity that goes on all over the place because we try to get some sense of, do we have data quality? 
Reconciliation is a data quality problem. If you have a single source of the truth, and when we're talking about single source of the truth, we're not talking about some data warehouse because the single source of the truth is the ledgers. The ledgers are the book of record. Can we make the ledgers more effective for our reporting processing needs? Reduce and eliminate reconciliation. Challenge the way our business systems are constructed and used today to get to higher quality systems, higher data quality systems. How do you ensure that your entire organization has robust data controls? Yeah, and the, the word control there immediately conjures up cost, doesn't it? A friend of mine one time, there's project manager emphasis on, we need to have greater control. We need to have people reporting all the time on what they're doing. And uh, my mentor said to me one day, you know, who would have ever thought that giving people their own car and allowing them to drive at these ridiculous speeds on their own wherever they want to go could ever work. And yet it works every day, all over the world. People get where they need to go autonomously by following rules and, and, and processes to get where they want to go. Can you make your data control processes something that enables people to do what they need to do without putting a burden on top of them? without thinking that there's some higher level authority that's going to know better how they use the data or where to capture the data than they will. Now, part of the problem is often our data collectors are independent from our data users. So the data collectors have no accountability for how they collect the data. This field, uh, it's a problem field, just dump one, two, three into that field and you can get by it. That that disconnects the person collecting the data from the person using the data. If you can connect in the same way that we do with, with driving, that the connect the, the policies and procedures with enabling the job and a full range of responsibilities that allow them or require them to use their data in some ways and to clean up their data if they don't do it, those are things that I think help ensure and, and don't add cost to the processes at the same time improving the quality of the data. How can companies best invest in IT solutions? That's a pretty broad question, Dylan. I'm not sure how, what I'd say about that. How, how will innovation in data analytics impact financial reporting moving forward? Well, where I think we have to go is our data quality for financial reporting. Our financial reporting systems cost us huge amounts today. And um, there's a recognition, there's some insights developing that there may be ways of lowering the cost of our financial capturing and financial data processes. What this requires is the more of a shared environment where individuals share the cost with other individuals of capturing the data at a high quality process and eliminating that reconciliation. That process of what might be termed, the, the thought came from blockchain, but I don't think blockchain is adequate to the problem, but a shared ledger, a true shared ledger between transacting parties that allow them to eliminate reconciliation statement processings, all of those things will improve the quality of the data will can help collapse down the number of ledgers that are maintained, which can then improve the analytical processes, can happen at a lower level of detail without having to make copies of the data. All of that will take cost out of controlling the data, which will then increase the value we find in that data because the data is more accurate. It, it agrees to the terrain and there's not a gap between the terrain. And the people involved understand the value because they use the data and they see the value and can correct the data if they see problems in it. All of those things going together will help improve, I think, financial analytics and that, and that use of the data and our data quality over time.